This is the first of three videos where we're going to demonstrate how to solve for the electromagnetic potentials. We're starting from the equations that we derived in a previous video, del squared a minus 1 over c squared d2a by dt squared is equal to minus mu naught j um, and del squared v uh, minus 1 over c squared d2v by dt squared is equal to minus rho over epsilon naught. Now, the first of these arguments is going to use what I will describe as a plausibility argument. Um, I'll explain why the solution that we're going to propose is plausible, and then we'll just check that it actually solves the equations. So without time dependence, um, we know the following solutions. We have that V of R is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught volume integral of rho of r prime over r minus r prime uh, dr prime and I'll note here that I'm using dr prime as a shorthand for the volume element at r prime um, and a of r is given by mu naught over 4 pi volume integral of j at r divided by r minus r prime again dr prime. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, when we introduce time, we have to take into account the fact that electromagnetic information, if you like, the light and, and anything associated with electromagnetism, travels at a finite velocity, i.e. at the velocity c. Um, so, you want to say em, em info travels at c. And so the time that we need to use um, in our sources needs to be an earlier time. Um, when we say an earlier time, essentially what we're doing is we're allowing for the delay in the transport of the information from the source to the observation point. Um, and that earlier time, t prime, is equal to the time t when we're doing the observation minus the distance r minus r prime over c. Um, and of course note that for every point r prime in space we will have a different t prime. Now we are going to simply assert that using this we can give the solution which is that v at r and t is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught the volume integral of rho at r prime and t prime divided by r minus r prime dr prime and a at r and t is given by mu naught over 4 pi the volume integral of j at r prime and t prime uh, divided by r minus r prime dr prime. <coughs> Excuse me. This is only a plausible argument, and in order to be sure, we need to check um, that these potentials fulfill the equations above. If you're not really interested in the mathematical details, you could actually stop at this point and just accept my statement um, that these will work. Um, if you're more concerned in, in following on, then um, stick around and we'll go through it. It gets a little bit complicated mathematically, algebraically, but it's not really very hard. Something else that's worth noting is that in these formulae, um, if j or rho do not depend on time, then those formulae reduce to the standard form, um, which is a, a reassuring thing. So we're just going to concentrate on V. Um, we could do the same thing for A, but it would be an entirely identical set of um, operations. We'll first of all take the, um, the gradient, take grad V, um, and then we will take the divergence of grad V. That'll give us del squared v, and that should, by the equation above up here, give us del squared v is equal to 1 over c squared d2v by dt squared minus rho over epsilon naught. That's the plan. 
Now we need to make a number of observations. First of all, when we're taking these gradients, we're differentiating um, with respect to R. So I'm going to say WRT, that's with respect to R not R prime. That's important to note because we're going to be taking the differential inside the integral um, up here. And we can do that because it's not the same variable. I'm going to define um, a variable capital R, which is equal to R minus R prime. Um, then capital R without the vector sign is just the magnitude of R minus R prime. And R vector hat, of course, is just capital R divided by R magnitude. When we think about differentiating, um, we've already said that the integral isn't affected but the integrand, the thing we are integrating, is affected. So rho is affected um, because of t prime, not because of anything else. Um, so it's affected through t prime. Um, and of course, 1 over r is affected when we differentiate. So let's collect a few useful results that we're going to need. Um, so first of all, d by dt is directly equivalent to d by dt prime. So those two are identical. Um, if we take the grad of rho, that is equal to d rho by dt, um, and then grad of t prime. And it's not crazy to be taking the gradient of a time because of t prime involves an r minus r prime. Um, and that's equal to minus 1 over c d rho by dt grad of r. That's easy enough to work out. Um, the gradient of R um, is simply uh, R hat. Again, these are very simple to work out. Um, the gradient of 1 over R, which is something else that we'll need, is equal to minus R hat divided by R squared. And we'll come up with a few more later. So let's start with um, the gradient. So we'll take the gradient of V and that's equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. There's a volume integral. Um, and now, I'll just scroll back up so we can see it. We're going to need um, to take the derivative of 1 over capital R, and we're going to need to take the derivative of this time. Um, so the, the, the gradient of rho is going to be the first thing that comes up, which comes in because of the time. Um, so when we do that, we get a minus 1 over c d rho by dt, um, and then we have an r hat over r squared. Sorry, not over r squared, over r. The 1 over r um, comes from here. The r hat comes from um, this gradient of r, which is just there. And we then also have another term, which is minus rho, and then we have the gradient of 1 over r, which is here. Um, and that we've just said is r hat over r squared um, dr prime. Okay, that first step is very simple. Um, we're going to have to take a little bit more complicated things when we take the divergence. So the divergence of grad v, which of course is just del squared v, um, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Um, that's always going to be there. We have the volume integral, um, and then we're going to have to differentiate this term, and there will be two contributions, one from r, one from rho, and this term again, one from rho, one from r squared. So we're going to work with four terms. So for the first two terms, um, we're going to have minus 1 over c, and we'll have a square bracket of um, r hat over r dotted with the gradient of d rho by dt. Um, that's the first part, plus d rho by dt, and then we have the divergence of r hat over r. Uh, that's the differential of the first term. Um, the second term is we have an r hat over r squared dotted with a grad rho, and we add on a rho divergence of r hat over r squared dr prime. Okay, now we need a couple more results. Um, 
those, those results that we need are as follows. We need the fact that the gradient of d rho by dt, um, you can work out is minus one over c d2 rho by dt squared. Um, and this is just using this line here, but a second time. Um, grad of r, which is just minus one over c d2 rho by dt squared, um, r hat. That's the first thing we need. We then need a couple of results. The divergence of r hat over r, um, which we have here, is equal to 1 over r squared. And the other thing we need is the divergence of r hat over r squared. And that crops up over here in that fourth term. And that's equal to 4 pi delta of r. Okay, so that's the Dirac delta function, and it's zero everywhere except where r is equal to the origin. With those results, which I'm not going to prove, but you can do if you want to, we find that del squared v is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times the volume integral of um, 1 over c squared d2 rho by dt squared r hat dotted with r hat divided by r. Um, that's coming from this first term here. Um, and we're going to go through the terms one by one. Minus one over c d rho by dt uh, times one over r squared. Minus, minus one over c d rho by dt, oopsie, r hat dotted with r hat over r squared. That's this third term here, um, minus 4 pi rho delta of r. And that's all integrated with respect to r prime. Now, if you look carefully um, at these two terms, you will see that they cancel. Uh, we have minus minus, which is plus, we have 1 over c, we have d rho by dt, and r hat dot r hat is just 1, so we have the 1 over r squareds, both of which cancel. So that makes life significantly easier, um, and so we can simplify and move on, um, and what we find is as follows. We find that del squared v, um, and hopefully at this stage you're starting to notice some things that are looking quite hopeful. Um, with this first term, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 1 over c squared d2 by dt squared outside the integral, um, and you'll see why in a second. And we are left with 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, the volume integral of rho of r prime and t prime divided by r dr prime. Um, and then that final term gives us a minus 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times the volume integral of rho of r prime and t prime delta of r dr prime. We're almost there. This term here is simply v of r and t. That's the definition we gave above. Um, the only thing that's different in this, in this way of writing it is I've used capital R for R minus R prime. Um, when we do the volume integral um, of, excuse me, can we, when we do the volume integral of this, um, oh, I've lost a four pi, whoops. Um, there should be a four pi sitting in there. Um, when we do the volume integral of that, what we're going to get is, um, I need to go back to green, sorry. 4 pi rho of r comma t, um, because the delta function will just pick out the charge density at the origin. Um, so let's combine that all together. We get del squared v is equal to 1 over c squared d2 v by dt squared minus the 4 pi's cancel rho over epsilon naught. And this is the equation we were looking we needed to fulfill. That's the equation for v of r and t. Um, and therefore, our solution, um, whoops, our solution is works. 
it's not very satisfying just quoting a result or giving a plausible explanation and then showing that it works, though sometimes that's how you have to solve problems. Um, this way is perhaps the least mathematically complicated. Um, there will be two more videos, one of which will be a, um, a slightly simplified version where we discuss how and why we solve. That corresponds to what's in the notes. Um, if you're doing the course with me, the final video um, will go into the full details of uh, Green's function approach to solving for the, um, the potentials, which explains exactly and precisely why we have this formula.